Kangaroos, the title given to Australian rugby league teams which tour Great Britain and France. The first tour of Great Britain was in 1908-9 and from that foundation a great tradition was born. The touring party of 1982, coached by Frank Stanton and captained by Max Krillich, made a triumphant march throughout Britain and France to be the first kangaroos undefeated in all games. They became known as the Invincibles. Twenty-eight players make up the squad of the 16th Kangaroos, but only five of them were members of the Invincibles of 1982. Thirteen matches lie ahead on English soil, to be followed by seven in France. The English fans have been waiting with unprecedented interest for this tour to begin. Of course, the 82 Kangaroos made an enormous impact on the British sporting public, and I've never known a tour, a visit by overseas sportsmen, awaited so eagerly as these 86 Kangaroos. It's going to be a tremendous series ahead of us. <laughs> Australia has become the greatest rugby league nation in the world and Captain Wally Lewis is intent on keeping this reputation intact. Along with his coach Don Ferner, Lewis will lead by example. Uh, every guy in the, in, on, the, on the tour itself, I think if you find when you look at his record, they've uh, proved themselves in Sydney or Brisbane this year at uh, every level of football that they've tried their hand at. So I think the Ponds are in for a bit of a hard time. After arriving at their home base in Leeds, the Kangaroos went to the famous Headingley Stadium to meet the press. Enormous interest has been building in the north of England as this battle for the Ashes begins. Really open mouth, so she's really happy. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Look this way for us, that's great. Lovely. After the long flight from Australia, and with other formalities aside, it's now down to business. As the boys prepare for their first match of the tour against Wigan coached by former Kiwi coach Graham Lowe. Central Park, home of Wigan and its cherry and white army of supporters. Wigginers are typical of the people who live in the north of England. Friendly, hospitable, and with a great sense of humor. Oh. 
Wigan is the richest and best supported team in England and Central Park was a cauldron of emotions as 30,000 fans packed in to see their local heroes do battle against the mighty Australians. Sirenan gets to his feet. Sterling, the Australian backs move into action. Lewis, lovely pass back in for Cleal, then for Roach. He's got the support of Niebling. Jack's in the line. Gary Jack. Michael O'Connor. And it's a try to Australia. Watch for the Lewis or Sterling rubber. Lewis. Long pass. Picked up by G. Miles. Kenny. Kenny Sterling. Try by Australia. Will he get it down? He's, He's awarded it. And I just feel, Benny, that the holes are starting to open in this Wigan defence. Uh, especially up in the middle of the rucks. I think there's a lot of holes starting to creep in there. And Bob Linder just showed that yeah, there's easy eyes to be made. Here goes Crusher Cleal. Cleal for the line, but he's taken a yard short as Wally Lewis shakes his head in disappointment. Cleal to his feet. Through he goes. Ray Price fashion try. To try. Noel Cleal scores Australia's third try. Simmons to Lewis. Quick wrap around with Simmons. There's the gap. Roy Simmons in the clear. Gee, that could have been a penalty that went to Australia because certainly Bob Lindner was interfered with by the Wigan defence as Simmons made the break. Lewis, Miles, his teammate from Queensland, Lindner. Lindner for Lewis. Lewis for the line. That's a Queensland back up. The referee's over. Has he awarded the try? It's a try to Wally Lewis. I don't know whether you agree or not, but... Wigan seem to have just slowed to a, a bit of a walk at the moment. I, I don't think they're used to this sun being out. <laughs> I think their fitness is starting to show. Light, no, charge down. Sterling will get the, the ball. Oh, oh. Gee, he did everything he right. The line, he saw the line before he caught the ball. Good way. Forward. Little chip over the top. Clever play. Clever play by the Wigan half. Beautiful skills. Oh, this is going to be a great try. Sean Edwards. Dean Bell, great try, that's, a, great that's try. a tremendous try, and haven't the Wigan fans gone crazy? Potter is regarded as a certainty to play for Great Britain in the Test matches, Roberts, that pass was forward, Graham West, Edwards, Sean Edwards, great try, tremendous try, and the crowd really warming to this Wigan revival. Peter Sterling, Gene Miles, Kenny, O'Connor. Beautiful step from O'Connor. Roach kisses there. Oh, and Les Kiss will race away. And that really could be the ball game. Well, what a great try to Australia. And it's picked up by Robert Lowe. So that's given Wigan a chance again to launch an attack. And I can tell you they'll want to capture every chance they can get. Dean Bell, beautiful oh. pass, the third try to Wigan, great Joe Ryan scores the tie. He's a, he scored some great tries, the Look crowd have gone berserk. What a superb try, they have now scored three Benny and they've been absolute gems. Score remains 26 to 18 and it's all over. And the fans come onto the ground. We've got an injured Australian player. 16-2 at half-time, Australia lead. Tries to O'Connor, Sterling, Cleal, Lewis and Kiss. Michael O'Connor kicked three goals for Wigan. All their tries came in the second half. And three absolute gems they were. To Bell, Edwards and Leiden. Henderson Gill kicked three goals. And so the final scoreline, 26 points to 18. Leaving the hills and Yorkshire Dales behind, the Australians travel east to the North Sea city of Kingston-upon-Hull, landmarked by the famous Humber Bridge and renowned for its fishing industry. John Dorohy with the ball place moves in, chance to put Hull Kingston Rovers in the lead. And that looks a great kick. And so the Robins lead the Kangaroos by two points to nil here at Craven Park. Once again, Elias running wide through the dummy. Through he goes. Elias short is it a try. It's a try to Australia. There's Hasler, Terry Lamb, Belcher in the line. He's in the clear. Mortimer, one to beat. 
Back inside, Terry Lamb. And what a great try by Australia. As Dorohy moves in. Let's watch the flight of the ball. It looks good. The flags go up. And Dorohy makes it two from two. So Hasler, ball into the scrum. It's an Australian scrum win. Belcher, step nicely, beat one. Got the pass away, oh, Lamb. Pass. Put the glasses down, Terry Lamb for the line. And he'll go over for his second try. Lovely pass from Dunn to, to Miles. Miles has the support of Langmac and Langmac goes over. So early in the tour is John Dorohy moves in. Can he make it three from three? It looks good. The flags go up. Chris Rudd at dummy half. Again to Parker. Speckley got the ball away to Bostad. Kerry Bostad scores. Shearer traps it soccer style. Oh, dreadful defence from Hull Kingston Rovers. Elias through one. Buddy Elias will score his second try of the match. Terry Lamb, Bella. There's the pass for Lamb, beautifully picked up. And a great try. Australia lined out an attack. Alexander, Lamb, the wraparound with Alexander, beautiful pass. Langmack, oh, Terry yes. Lamb, fourth try, and what a gem that was. They led by 20 points to 10 at half time. As Elias goes away again, Terry Lamb beat one tackle and he beat another. Number five. Can this be try number five it is? Terry Lamb has had an outstanding debut. Well, those some tempers are fraying. There's a good run by Davidson. Oh, I popped the pass up for Dunn. Have a look, oh, he's no. got it. Terry Lamb, unselfish play for Mortimer. And Mortimer goes over for another Australian try. OK, so the final scoreline, 46 points to 10 in favour of Australia. Tries Lamb 5, Langmack, Mortimer and Elias, who scored two tries. Meninga, two goals from four attempts. Lamb, three from three. And for Hull Kingston Rovers, both did a try. John Dorohy kicked three goals from four attempts. And Australia led by 20 points to 10 at half time. It's 15 I'm going to use for the game on Sunday. It'll be Gary Jack, Kiss, uh, O'Connor, Miles, Kenny, Lewis, Sterling, Locke, Linder, Cleal, Folks, uh, Needlin, Simmons, Roach, the two reserves for this time will be Surinan and Land, so that'll be the 15 I'll use. When the surroundings are unfamiliar and families and loved ones are far away, it's good to have friends. The next tour match against Leeds will be the Kangaroos' one and only chance to tread the immaculate turf of English League's best-kept ground. Leeds' defence is stretched. Simmons, Sterling calling for it, but he puts the kick through. Play on, Lewis, try! Try to Australia. Cleal is a man in a dummy half, out through Sterling. To Gary Jack. Through the dummy, beautifully to Kenny. Gary Jack through the gap support of O'Connor oh and Gill was lucky to get him play on Gary Jack that's a try to Australia oh, no he's short it's a try superb support play by Gary Jack they lead 10-0 as we fast approach half time here at Headingley Les Kiss stepping run by the Australian winger Lewis quick hand Sterling here's a go for Australia they've got the numbers Kenny Sterling Michael O'Connor, great try to Australia. Superb try, and it couldn't have come at a better time. Simmons, Roach, back in for Cleal. Beautiful pass, Kenny. Step back inside, Smith. Long pass. Lindner, over the 22. Miles. Jack. Simmons, O'Connor, second try for Michael O'Connor. That was a superb Australian try. Wrestled to the ground by Big Paul Sirenen. 
arguably the biggest player in the field out there this afternoon. Smith, and again a good tackle from Sirenen. And Simmons has come up with possession from Australia, for Australia. So that's great pressure in defence by Paul Sirenen, uh, Gary. Yeah, that's good work from Paul Sirenen. He's uh, he obviously realised he's got to work hard. Oh, there's an easy try by Crusher Cleal. Australia scores its fifth try. And it was all so easy for big Noel Cleal from dummy half. So the green and gold of Australia is starting to move into full flight. Out through Dowling to Sterling, a long pass to Miles. Pass over the top. Lidner to Les Kiss with room. Supported Sterling. Good pass for Sterling. No support for Australia is there. Simmons is there. Oh. Dowling. And another great try to Australia. So Paul Sheridan appears to be okay after the magical cure from the team trainer, Larry Britton. Brett Kenny. I think you can put your glasses down. McGore is chasing, but Brett Kenny scores Australia's try. They've done it impressively. They've made some errors, but they've scored seven tries to nil. Will this be try number eight? Lamb, Wally Lewis, for the corner. Great try. Wally Lewis scores his second. And Terry Lamb has a hand in it as well. Michael O'Connor has also had a field day again today two tries and he's also kicked his share of goals here this afternoon that one won't be successful and the Hooter sounds and Australia successful here at Headingley to the tune of 40 points to nil Henry to have still, eh? First sign of the true taste of typical North England weather as the morning training session gets underway. Good work, Danny! Danny! <laughs> Cumbria, famous for its beautiful and majestic Lake District, provides a representative team to oppose the Kangaroos on their fourth outing. Out to Meninga. There's a great run from Mortimer Belcher in the line. Belcher got the pass back in, and that's a great try. Johnny on the spot again is Terry Lamb. Meninga. Terry Lamb. Would you believe it? He's in again. A chance now for Dale Shearer, his first touch of the match, looking for support. And Greg Alexander scores a great Australian try. On the blind side goes Alexander. The cutout pass. Langback got the pass back in for Meninga. Meninga in the clear. Draws Shearer. Shearer for the line. And Dale Shearer scores. Cuts out Hutton. Oh, that's a pass that's gone astray. And here's another try. Greg Alexander picks it up and goes over. Runs from dummy half. And again showing his strength. Got the pass away. This could be a try to Cumbria. It's a try. That's Holiday running wide and then straightens. Oh, through the superb pass, and that's a try. Over the 22, Belcher. Belcher will score. Gary Belcher scores Australia's seventh try. Lamb. Meninga. Now for Belcher. Australia moving to top gear again as Belcher goes up towards the 22. Gave it to Shearer. He'll have too much pace for the corner. And that's a try. It was 28 points to six and a half time. Australia chalking up 20 points in the second half to Cumbria 6, leaving the full-time scoreline 48 points to 12. Australia maintains that undefeated record on their triumphant march through Great Britain. Piss, Lewis, Sterling, Linda, Neebling, Cleal, Roach, Simmons and Dowling. The reserves are Lamb and Meninga. I've got to take my hat off to them. They're an excellent side. They're a physical side. They're big. They're all fast, they're all fit, and they can all play football. So if we do manage to get a good result against the Australians, I'll be the happiest man in the world. Uh, but it won't be myself that does it, you know, Dave. I, don't, I won't make a tackle in any of the test matches. I won't pass a ball. All I'll do is sit on my backside for three times 80 minutes and bite my fingernails and smoke my cigars. But if I can contribute just a little bit to a, a Great Britain test victory, I'll be the happiest man in the world. Here they come. There's John Fleming leading the, uh, the side out. Uh, he's the manager of the team coming through the corridors now. The Australian side coming out first. And uh, there's Wally Lewis, the captain of the Australian side. Peter Sterling going through. 
and the followers, uh, the team follow, they come through. We'll look as they come out underneath the uh, other end. They're being directed to go out to the middle of the ground, and there's the roar, the loud roar to proclaim that this Winfield Kangaroo Tour has just about to start from a test point of view, and there's some of the Australians around the ground ready to cheer their heroes, and we'll be doing our level best to get them, uh, to get them uh, a good coverage. And the Englishmen are coming out, the singing has already started. And now the English supporters are going to greet their heroes. They with a mighty roar, and you're going to be deafened by it in just a few moments' time. And there it is! The England side have appeared in the tunnel. Maurice Bamford leads them out. And their manager, Les Benenson. And they are getting a hero's welcome. The crowd roundly applauding. The ground has filled up very, very well. We will be in excess, I would imagine, of 50,000 people by now. Ladies and gentlemen, the National Anthem. Stand by for the National Anthem of Australia. Ten of them were singing along uh, as if they didn't have a care in the world. Now the Great Britain National Anthem. talk a whole lot of English. He's from Papillon, the Great Britain side in full. Joe Lydon, fullback, three quarters, Marchant and Gill on the wings, Schofield and Hanley in the centres, Myler and Fox the halves, the forwards, at lock forward, Goodway, second row, Crooks and Potter, Fieldhouse, Watkins and Ward are the uh, front row, Watkins and the hooker and captain. The subs are Edwards, 14, and Platt, 15. The coach, Maurice Bamford. Australia will be running into the breeze in the first half. There's the Australian side. Gary Jack, number one. Michael O'Connor, two. Uh, Brett Kenny, three. Gene Miles, four. Les Kiss, five. Wally Lewis, six. And Captain Peter Sterling. Dowling, Simmons, Roach, Cleal, Niebling and Linda. Wally Lewis will kick off for Australia. The rain coming down lightly at the moment. Australia running into the breeze. Wally Lewis with his mouth guard popping out of his mouth there. Stretching the hamstrings. The Australian forwards like cage lions, and up they go. The rail is off. And the roar goes up as the first tackle comes in. And that was a pretty strong one coming in there on Ian Potter. He's decked on the uh, quarter line. <coughs> Russ Cagney has run across field and he's picked up Brett Kenny and Michael O'Connor for offside. I'm not going to argue with that. I think they were yards offside. And that penalty is 10 metres outside the quarter at the England end. He's failed to find touch, but it comes off Michael O'Connor. And that was a bad blunder by O'Connor in the opening minute. A terrible blunder. That gives the England side the feed. And uh, really, that ball probably would have gone over the sideline uh, on the fall without uh, any problem had he not attempted to go for it. But uh, now having touched it, they get the feed. 
although Sterling's going to put it in. <laughs> well, the referees made a blunder there, but nonetheless, we'll go on with that. Now, there's uh, a fair bit of strong tackling going on here at the moment, 10 metres outside the Australian quarter. Dowling comes on like a an enraged uh, Buffalo there with a strong charge, and now there's a penalty uh, against the Englishman for failure to get off the tackled player. Now, I hope the referee is going to be consistent throughout with this. We want to see it not just in the opening couple of minutes and then forgotten. Wally Lewis, no difficulty with finding touch. A gain of about 20 metres. Out they go on the open side, switching it out to Kenny. Kenny gets it to Miles, and Miles is in for the try! That's the opening try to Australia. Brilliant stuff to wide spread ball, and uh, the defence opened up wide. And I've got to tell you, there was panic in the English three quarters. About 30 seconds before that try was on, they were waving frantically that they were short-handed out there and to get over in a hurry. So uh, Sterling now wanting to get this one in straight to the referee's liking. Good attacking position about 22, three metres out. Wally Lewis changes sides. In it goes, out to Lewis. Lewis throws a dummy, got a pass away. It's ricocheted to Jack. It was touched in flight. That should be six to go. It is. Gary Jack gets up and plays it. Goes away to Lewis. Lewis gets a cutout pass to Sterling. Out to Simmons. Simmons standing too flat. The Australian team very, very bunched there. Not giving themselves any depth. They need to stand a lot deeper. Out to Sterling. Sterling away there with a cutout pass to Lewis. Pops a pass back inside to Miles. Miles looking for support. Gets it away to O'Connor. And he's in for the try. That's a try. Wide out. Gene Miles is the man that's done it again. Great stuff there by the Australian side, spreading the ball wide and showing that this England side can be stretched to the limit if you keep the handling going and don't push stupid passes. This Australian side have got a number of moves on. Out to Sterling. Sterling goes with a little grubber kick. Kenny held it nice. Uh, I think Lewis was brought down there in the field of play. It'll be a penalty and there's a trip, no question about it. A judged uh, little uh, kick over the top by Peter Sterling. The move was going to be worked with uh, Wally Lewis. Lewis was brought down with a trip and it will be an attempted goal to be taken by Michael O'Connor. Now he's about 20 metres off centre. He's about 17 metres out from the line. He's going to try to punch it hard. He does punch it. It is a goal. Yes, he's managed one. That's an excellent goal too. So the Australian side are starting to assume a dominance in this game with a 10 points to nil lead. And plenty of defence moving in too. The England side has uh, put in some strong defence. Roach comes on the uh, open side of the ruck, trying to do a burrowing job through, but he's got more ball skills than that. At the moment, Sterling with a reverse pass to Cleal. Cleal trying to stand in and tackle, does stand in it. The ball's been knocked down, still Australia's ball. Picked up there by Linda. Linda comes away, gets a pass away to Simmons. Simmons to Sterling. Sterling gets it to Lewis. Lewis goes under a tackle, gets a pass back on the inside to Linda. Australia looking good when they move the ball. Simmons now, the, still, uh, the call has come from Sterling on the open side, out to Kenny. Kenny pops a pass to Miles, he's going strong, gets a pass to O'Connor, and O'Connor's in for the try, no question about it. No question about it, and Miles again, instrumental in a brilliant pass there to set Michael O'Connor free on the left. And uh, this has been a, a fine all-round performance by Gene Miles, the scorer of the first try, and setting up two other, uh, well, setting up uh, being involved in two others. So that scoreline becoming an embarrassment now for the Great Britain side. Australia lead by 14 points to nil. Out to Simmons. Simmons gets a pass away there onto Dowling, and he goes pouring up the middle again. The rain coming down into the Australian's face at the moment. With a 14 nil cushion and the breeze to come in the second half. Now Simmons is trying to punch. There's been an incident involving uh, Stephen Roach there, who's, uh, no, that was uh, Dowling, involving Dowling. And Simmons has seen fit to get involved with a player that was marking up. And the touch judges both are in. Russ Cagney, the referee, has moved away about 15 metres. And he's going to ask the England player, Crooks, to come to him and get him away. He's been sent to the sin bin for 10 minutes. 10 minutes for a transgression in that play the ball. So Lee Crooks off. And... Uh, that is another blow to the Great Britain side. And Michael O'Connor kicking into the teeth of this. Even though he's only 18 metres out, there may be some doubt about him getting the distance. Well, not only has he got it, he's kicked it. And that is a great goal under the condition. So the Australian side really coasting away now. And they lead by 16 points to Great Britain's nil. 
All right, back after the kick for touch has got them to the quarter line. England now with Fieldhouse trying to run the ball, but he's running sideways as so many of the English players are. They don't get themselves running in a forward position, in a forward direction. This little fellow's done more front, front running. Derek uh, Fox, the little halfback, he does know the way to go. He hasn't got the pace to make the breaks. There's a good gap right up the middle of the ruck, and it's an England player, Ward. He's made a good bust, but a pass away which has gone astray. The ball's still there. He kicked down. Marlow's a race for the ball. It's going to go over the dead ball line. It'll be a penalty. It's going to be a penalty to England. I'm not going to argue with that. There was a race for the ball. I think Wally Lewis might have been the player that was holding on to Marlow and failing to let him get through and chase the ball. Lee Crooks. He's got the goal, so Australia 16, England 2. That is a sterling feed. He's watching from the open side. It's in and out with the assistance of hand. So it's the Great Britain side. They've got the differential penalty. Now they're getting a bit of a, a little bit more momentum in their play at the moment. The England forwards have just started to run a little straighter, a little harder, taking an example from their halfback Fox. Now let's see what they can do from this point. Out to Crooks. Now Meninga warming up on the sideline. There's a pass to Marla. Marla was nearly put through on that. A gap by Goodway. The Australian defence caught a little bit there. And again, we have two footballs on the field. Away it goes out on the open side of the ruck to Crooks. Crooks trying to weave his way through. Got a pass away brilliantly to Schofield. And Schofield's in for a try. Great work there by Crooks. Still in a tackle. And yes, and we're seeing a strange sight here. It's the Sun. Beautiful hands there. Lovely pass has gone on the outside. It's Great Britain going upfield with Lyndon on the split. He's going to go round Jack, and he's beaten Gary Jack beautifully. It's a great try to Great Britain side. Magnificent try. Absolutely superb. It's brought the house down. Absolutely superb. Out they go, the Australians. Out to Lewis. Lewis steps, weaves, busts the tackle. Gets a pass away to Miles, and Miles is in beside the post. And Wally Lewis has created a magnificent try for Gene Miles, who's gone over and scored right beside the post. Record for a test match anywhere in Great Britain. There it is, today's attendance. Magnificent sight to see, 50,583. I think the largest soccer crowd they've had here this year is something around 46,000. <laughs> and that's for the famous Manchester United club. OK, Australia in a strong position now. Niebling dumbing to go up the blind side. Turns it back into Cleal. Cleal on the surge. Defence stops him. About eight metres out. He's quickly to his feet. Simmons at dummy half. Out there to Sterling. On to Lewis. On to Kenny. Kenny's got the acceleration. Got it to Miles. Got it out there. Beautifully to O'Connor. And O'Connor's in again. Three tries in a test match. <clears throat> Moving it out to Fox. Out there to Crooks. Crooks going for a long cutout pass. Should be a try. Brett Kenny, the ever-present, the man who's always there with a the loose ball, swooped on it, got on the pass to Gene Myers, a dummy half. He could go close. I think he's held up in goal, is he? The referee, what's he going to do? It's a try. He's ruled that Myers has scored the try. So that's three tries for Gene Myers and a scoreline that's now moved on to Australia 30, Great Britain 10. The kick has been taken. It's a gain of about 15 metres. Mal Meninga coming up to get involved in the action and he got uh, to within 10 metres of that quarter line, out to Cleal, Cleal on the surge and he's a strong player and he's about 4 metres from the quarter line right now with Simmons there screeching for it at dummy half, get up quick he says, way to Sterling, Sterling to Simmons the run around then back on the inside to Roach, Roach can't get a pass away, uh, Meninga was tackled on suspicion there, Simmons, Lewis, Sterling steps beautifully, can't get a pass away, he's tackled about 8 metres out perhaps 10 metres. And now it goes on there to Lindner. Lindner pops the pass back on the blind side. It's knocked backwards behind them, but it's the last tackle coming up now. This, uh, Australian side uh, looking to score more points. Simmons away to Sterling. He's got the kick across field. Dangerous tactics. Taken by Jack, and Jack's in for a try. There will be something we'll say. He may well have been a yard offside. Only a, a, a direct side on shot was Showback. But uh, certainly the kick was a magnificently weighted one. 
and has further embarrassed this great Britain side. So we've got uh, 35 minutes gone in the second half. We've got a scoreline that reads 36 points to 10. And certainly this is developing into an embarrassing afternoon for the Great Britain side. All right, the kick's been taken. Now can Great Britain uh, salvage anything out of this with a couple of tries to in the last dying stages of the game? Certainly they're not going to salvage anything in the way of prestige, but maybe a little bit of self-pride could come up. All right. The crisscross move being worked. Crooks has gone right through the middle of the gap. Showed a pass back on the inside. Look forward to the referees allowed it. Got a scope field. And Crooks has come up with another pass that deserves a try. Although I must be very honest and say, I thought the last pass was uh, marginally forward. But uh, the referee, Mr. Raskagny, was fairly adjacent to it and didn't rule that way. So this is another possible six points to the Great Britain side. 38 points to 14. A very, very high scoring game in such atrocious conditions. Henderson Gill around the corner style kicker too. Although from not such an acute angle and he's a left foot kicker. Struck that well. 38 points to 16. And Number five, Henderson Gill. Back come the Australian side and there's the hooter. And the hooter is uh, sounding the, uh, the death knell of uh, the hopes of uh, the coach of the Great Britain side because uh, I think he really thought, Maurice Bamford, that he had the, the makings of a, uh, a team that could hold this Australian side. Well, yeah, a great start by Australia. Yes, it certainly was, mate. Um, you know, very pleasing to get off, especially under those conditions. I think it took us a little while to get uh, going, but one up in the series and we're extremely happy. In this next tour match against club side Halifax, there are some familiar faces. We'll certainly, uh, we'll certainly be trying. Um, we're going to go out and give it our best. It's a, it's a great boost for, for Halifax to be playing against the Kangaroos, and we're certainly looking forward to it. It'll be a bit, uh, bit odd uh, going out there and having a look at the green and gold on the other side, the other end of the field. But uh, it's just another game, and I'm over here playing for Halifax, and uh, we'll be going out to, uh, you know, to do our best to uh, send them back with at least one defeat. Out to Alexander, sights a gap, looks for support, there could have been a Shepherd. he's got it on to Maninga, Maninga gets it back into Lamb, and Lamb will go in and score the first Australian try, classy stuff. It's just outside the quarter, he's almost midfield, he knows the direction of the wind now, he struck that straight, he struck it hard, it hits the roof, and that's the first blood to Halifax. And here they go with Maninga receiving a long pass, it's a try to Kenny Shirley. Oh yes, he's beautiful footwork at the end of it, and was able to ground the ball. Now Australia out to Elias Alexander, Lamb, Lamb away to Davidson. Bit of a dust-up going on midfield. Out to Meninga, and Belcher's in for a try. There's Meninga getting a pass back on the inside to Belcher, and Belcher's in. Meninga running powerfully, gets through three defenders, looking for support on the outside, gets it to Kenny. Lovely run pass to Kenny. Kenny's up the inside, gets it away there to Alexander, and he's cupped on the face, and he's left him pointless. It's a great sprint. Oh, yeah! Halifax. Alexander, Alexander, beautiful pass to Lamb. Lamb's looking for support, pops it to Meninga. Meninga will go in and score. Oh, delightful stuff. Absolutely exquisite stuff. Uh, they're like uh, everybody's uh, champing at the bit. Alexander through. He's going to score. Three for the youngster. A nice pass out there to Mortimer. Mortimer to uh, Cleal and Clears goes up the sideline. He's kicked ahead. It's going to be a race for the ball. Lamb will get to it. And it's a try. Cleal out to Bella. Bella winds up and goes straight and hard ahead. And there, I believe, is the hooter. That is the end of time. Bella gets up and resents uh, a bit of a tackle. The kids come swarming on the field. <laughs> Oh, you're like a big Shirley. Come on, get it up there. Come on. Get that touch going. Quick. Come on. Hard. 
I think it's a better side than 82. I think it will be a better side. I think what you've got to realise over here now is the standard of football has improved uh, from 82. And I think this side has proved that it's got more, well, strength in depth as a 26 players. It's frightening, actually. The Kangaroos' record is still intact. Six matches, six wins. Moving it out to Liptrot. Liptrot gets a long cut-out pass. It's been intercepted there by Dale Shearer. He's up the sideline. He's streaking away. They won't catch him. And I can tell you, he's just given himself a medical on his uh, torn groin muscle. He's only about 15 metres out. Strikes that hard and straight, and away she goes. Out to Dowling. Dowling to Lewis. Lewis Sterling. Sterling to Dunn. Good step. Showed a good step. He's in. Should be a try. It's a try to Nebling right under the post, and Dunn's done very well. That's good stuff. Now, the kick is about seven metres outside the quarter and almost directly in the middle of the field. He struck that high and hard. It's a goal. The player with the highest points at the end will receive $5,000 worth of national Panasonic product. Gene Miles on the move. Oh, he's gone right through the defence. He's going to score the simplest of tries. Lachlan. Strikes that, the crowd roar. And away we go to a new scoreline of 18 points to eight. But he didn't go out. On to Lewis. Oh, watch those passes when you turn your back, Sterling. Away to Dowling. Dowling showing a clean pair of heels. But a beautiful pass away to Dunn. Dunn's got it to Cleal. And Cleal's in for a try. He's tackled 10 metres short. Australia trying to pile on the points. 22 to 8. Away it comes to Sterling. Out to Lewis. Lewis to Miles. Miles gets a pass away there beautifully to Nebling. And Nebling's got it out nicely to Shearer. And that's another try to the Australian side. Many say that he should be the England halfback. Intercept. Meninga will score in the corner. Put the glasses down. He'll run out of the ground if he wants to. And over he goes. <laughs> 32 points to eight. That's the full-time score. Australia keeping their undefeated record intact with an immaculate defensive effort against a very strong side who didn't wilt but have the uh, embarrassment of being the leading team in the English League who have averaged 37 points in every match of the eight matches they've won this year but have been unable to cross the Australian line and that has got to be a great plus for Australian players and a full credit to their coach Don Ferner for the way he's gone about his job. Roach is gone, his shoulder's gone. Steve Roach is gone, he's off. And Paul Dunn will be the replacement. And I believe that uh, that uh, looks to me as though it's a dislocation of the shoulder, the left shoulder. The only dampener on the victory over St Helens was the bad news of prop Steve Roach's arm injury. However, keeping up morale, Roach's teammates took time out to meet their legion of supporters who had followed them all the way from Australia. Player of the game. That's Don Ferner. <laughs> <laughs> he used to play, you know, he used to play rugby league, this fella. Yeah. Oldham's ground, the water sheddings on the west of the hills, is the highest professional rugby pitch in the league. It is also probably the coldest. He gets a one-handed pass out to Alexander, acceleration, away to Belcher, Belcher out to O'Connor, O'Connor up the sideline, looks inside, gets it to Lamb, and Lamb's in for the first Australian try. On the blind side, the kick for position downfield goes straight to uh, Belcher midfield, he's got tons of pace this fella, he's going to take Shearer with him up the sideline, he steps one, he's gone past two, he gets the pass to Shearer, Shearer could go close to scoring, gets it out to who is it, Terry Lamb, do you believe it? 
Out they go along the three-quarter line. Oh, they're pumping it out, but not making any progress up the field, are they? Yes, they are. Right now, Mick Worrell makes a good bust. He's looking for support. He does get the pass away to Ashton, the halfback. Ashton's taken down. It's gone away there to Warnigie. Warnigie back on the inside, and it's to Colin Hogyard, and that's a splendid try. A splendid try to the Oldham side, backing up the ball carrier. It'll do it every time. You've got to look for support. You've got to run with the intention. There's Benny Elias running from dummy half. He'll score a try. It's a good try for the Australian captain. There's uh, Alexander come up with it up for the blind side. It's a try. Astonishing try. A really astonishing try. And again, Flanagan, the maestro at dummy half, gets a pass away to Ashton. Topless throws the dummy, tries to straighten. Got a forward pass into Raper. Raper's on the sprint. There's a little kick being put through. It's a chase. This could be another try to Oldham. It is. And Raper responsible for it with a very nice little grubber kick put through there out wide. 22 points to 16. Probably never really in danger of losing the game. With eight straight wins, including their first test victory at Old Trafford, the confidence is running high in the kangaroo camp. And a win here at the Ellen Road ground in Leeds in the second test will mean retaining the Ashes. For the Great Britain players, the same squad as in the first test, they know their reputations are on the line. The same goes for their coach, Morris Bamford. Everyone seems relaxed prior to the kickoff, but the tensions run deep as the discipline and hours of training sessions will soon come to a head. <laughs> yes, this is not Rex Mossop in The Godfather. This is Rex Mossop who wants to keep his head warm doing this test because I'm very happy to report that the weather conditions here in Leeds are superb. We have had four of the best days imaginable. The sky has been blue and the sun's been out. We've not been sunbaking, I hasten to add, because the air temperature is very low. And here come both sides being let out by their coaches. And it's a lovely sight to see the two teams coming out beside each other. The two captains uh, following their uh, respective coaches. Don Ferner on the left, there's John Fleming, the um, manager of the side out the front. Roy Simmons with a very serious look at his face. Greg Dowling, he of the tough front row play. A beautiful sight here, the ground an absolute picture. And Australian supporters here in their thousands. Let me tell you, it's almost like being at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Simmons at dummy half. Away to Dowling. Dowling coming on the burst. Just outside the Australian quarter. Dunn's going to get his touch of the ball now. There he goes. He gets his first feel of it in a test match. And that's also won a penalty for the Australian side. He's got the work out there from, uh, I believe that's number nine there, uh, David Watkinson, the uh, England captain. Up comes the defence now. Out there, strongly to Nibley. He was... Uh, one of our very strong and best players in the first test. Sterling, the kicking game, down she goes. Henderson Gill going back for it, he'll be under pressure. He's just about two metres out from his goal line where he's tackled. Good defence there coming through from Dale Shearer. 
And now Kenny, and there's a touch judge in to uh, have a look at a player, Gene Miles, who allegedly has put a bit of stick in in that tackle. And Miles being spoken to and penalised. Ward trying to start off running straight. And that's the only way for him to go. He ran like a soldier crab in the first test. Does it look to me to be an elbow used in that? And a penalty to Australia. Almost directly in front of the posts. And the referee, Mr Rask Cagney, is talking about the use of an elbow on that occasion. And uh, we'll look at the... Uh, We'll look at the play here now as Lee Crooks comes up and he's got a whack there. I just can't see what the referee saw, but uh, I saw an elbow. O'Connor just out near the corner. Only a few metres off centre. Should be a simple kick for him. The breeze is down his back. He achieved success. Australia have scored first. They lead by two points to nil. Australia win it. Lewis away to Miles. Good pass there to Jack. Jack trying to inject himself into the move. Gets a run around move there with Michael O'Connor. Showing the ball. Gets it to Shearer. Shearer's accelerating. There's plenty of cover. Loses the ball. Henderson Gill picks it up. Must run tackle. Goes upfield again. Breaks another one and finally tackled. Five metres short of the halfway line. Dunn was the final tackler. Brooks. The crowd really setting up a roar every time. Great Britain get their hands on the football. On a wall. Get a pass back on the inside to Goodway. Goodway looking for support. There was none there. They've taken play up to the uh, Australian quarter line. Out to Fox. Schofield steps, tries to straighten, but trips. Still on attack. Fox away to Crooks. Running sideways. Got a pass away beautifully to Miles. Tripped and falls about 12 metres out. Good attacking play there by Crooks. Slipped the pass nicely. One of the tactics, Fox goes for the kick through. It's going to be fielded in goal by Kenny. Kenny with a beautiful sidestep manages to get back into the field of play. Like a Toreador avoiding the ball. On the blind side they come. Lee Crooks, their most damaging player. Invariably gets bus run tackle. Got a pass away out the ledger. Ledger comes back midfield. He's evaded too. Got a pass away to Fox. Out there to Ward. The passes are going swell now. It's out to Marla. Marla's upfield. Linda can't get to him. O'Connor's coming across. There's a kick and chase now with Dale Shearer. This will go dead. And just as well it did for Australia. Great play by Great Britain. Plenty of uh, very good football in that bit of action, I can tell you. And they cut Australia open up uh, wide. Started by Linda on the right hand side of the field. When he came back midfield, having evaded a few tackles, then chain passing, saw Marla go right through. Australia 2, Great Britain 0. Michael O'Connor running from dummy half, and he makes a, about a seven metre gain, bringing it up to the quarter. Dumbing to the blind side, out to crush a clear. A good step, he's right through. He could go on. He gets a pass away to Linda, and Linda's in for the try. Big crusher clear. Suddenly brings Australia alive with one of those uh, magnificent runs of his. We've had 28 minutes of play and uh, Crusher Cleal, a solo effort, great stepping run, busted the defence with sheer strength and pace and then was able to offload nicely to Linda who scored a try adjacent to the post. Michael O'Connor is successful. So the score is Australia 8, Great Britain 0. On the Australian quarter now, Simmons, Sterling. Oh, cut out pass, went to O'Connor. He picked it up in the half volley. Gets a kick downfield. He could score a try. He's the only man anywhere near him. He will score a try. Michael O'Connor, magnificent, magnificent stuff from the dual international. And Wally Lewis is ecstatic and runs up and bangs his hand. Oh, yeah. What quality stuff that from the great dual international. Platt. And a fox. Little side foot kick, nicely fielded by Shearer. Back near his quarter, gets it away to Jack. Jack tries to run around his man, does that. 
And an opportunity to link with O'Connor. O'Connor gets it back on the inside to Kenny. Kenny uses beautiful footwork. He's through the middle there. And a beautiful tackle there by Fox. Picks him up. Midway between the Australia and the Great Britain quarter and halfway. Done on the surge. He's still going. Oh, and now he loses the ball forward. That was uh, just a little bit overdone, that run. He had the opportunity to pass the ball on one occasion back on the inside. Simmons at dummy half. On to Sterling. Sterling gets a pass to Lewis. Lewis is on the surge. And he's over. Right underneath the black dot. That's the place to score him. Big Wally. He's uh, got the look of a forward about him when you see him come through like that. That was a bit of vintage, Lewis. 16-0 Australia lead. Michael O'Connor. Pretty shonky looking kick, didn't go end over end, but nonetheless it brings the scoreline up to Australia 18, Great Britain 0. Seeing a head-on shot of Wally Lewis, creaming his way through some pretty parlous defence. Good way to be hooked for loitering for that attempted tackle. Crushes right through, should be a try, it will be to Gary Jack. The big crush has caught, killed him on the blind side of the ruck. And this uh, Great Britain defence now has begun. It's been shot to ribbons in the opening stanza of the second half. 22 points to nil. Jack in for a try, but uh, you've got no need to ask us who created that. The powerhouse running of Crusher Cleal. Michael O'Connor again from directly in front is successful he's going to have another big day 24 points to nil australia lead myla looking to uh, he's had the ball stolen from him standing there like the statue of liberty waiting for support and australian came in and uh, wally lewis was that man and just purloined the ball from him done strong game back inside the dowling good run Looks for support, gets it to Sterling. Sterling swivels and gets it to Jack. Jack will go in for a try. It's a rocker. It's a beauty. It's a gasser. Oh, yes. Done. Dowling. Sterling. How sweet it was. Simmons. Sterling. Wally Lewis on the run around. Manages to get a one-handed pass away. Last tackle coming up. Just getting a little bit too fancy we are on the Australian side. Nebling had to just uh, fall on that fallen pass. Lewis the kick out of the top. Sterling lobs a pass out to Miles. Miles gets it to Kenny. Kenny's running fleet of foot. Got a pass away to O'Connor. It's going to go over the sideline. No, it's not. Magnificently. He's got it back into Shearer. What can they do? The ball's gone to Dowling. Uh, to Linda. Linda on the ground. And that is what? A handover again. The third one. So Australia not even bothering to take the kicking option any longer. They're just keeping the ball alive and running this Great Britain side absolutely ragged. Ward. Now, oh, Shearish busted one tackle of Edwards, but he juggled the ball. There was a momentary problem with that. Simmons. And back they come to the pattern. Niebling. Strong, steady, settling the play down. Getting that Australian three-quarter line back in position. Now to Cleal. Cleal on the surge and a pass to Lewis. And Lewis is looking for Linda. Linda caught 10 metres his own side of uh, the other team's side of halfway. There did appear to be an opportunity to offload, but out to Sterling now. Sterling keeps it alive to Dowling. Dowling pops it back into Dunn. Dunn one-handed to Sterling. The little step and can't get a pass away. Last tackle coming up. 28 to nil. Australia lead. What are the tactics? They've been just keeping the ball alive, haven't bothered with the kicking game. Out to Lewis, but they're going back to kick now. It's a midfield type of a bomb. Been put high. Wally hasn't bothered to put him on side. It's come down to Marchant. The tackle count starts from now. Touched by an Australian. Out they go. Out to Fox. He's just swinging it out to Crook. Standing out there, and it's Edwards, the replacement. Long cut out past the ledger. They're going nowhere. Ledger's picked off, still inside his quarter. There's no way, apparently, for Great Britain, this squad, to get through the Australian defence. Sometimes they can get over it with a kick, but there's very precious little way they can get through it. Fieldhouse. Has his ball stolen there by Cleal. 
Peel gets it away to Lewis. Lewis, a one-handed pass to O'Connor. Connor back on the inside nicely to Dunn, who did magnificently to half volley that from low around the boots. They're only 12 metres out. Strong an attack. Look at the pass from Lewis to Sterling. A flick pass from behind. Out there. It's gone out to Dowling. On to Miles. Miles on the flick to Shearer. Shearer back inside. And Dowling's put it down right on the line. And I feel sorry for him. Oh, oh the crowd love it. Listen to that. The flaws. The English crowd applauding the Australian side. Beautiful thing. There's no one to pass to if they moved it wide. The kick has been charged down. Fox takes it. Away to Wally Lewis, pumps it out to Kenny, tries his step, gets it to O'Connor. O'Connor's gone up round Ledger, tries to stand up on him, gets it away to Jack. Jack looking for three, got it inside to Kenny, and Kenny's in front try. Oh yes! Great stuff! Australia carved him up. They decimated, dissected, and absolutely diabolically destroyed this Great Britain side today. 32 points to nil, and I suggest more to come. There's still 10 minutes of play. It could be anything. Michael O'Connor. 10 metres inside the quarter. 21 metres in from the sideline. Moves it. Struck it well. It's another goal. So the Australian side move on. 34 points to nil. And this O'Connor comes up with, I think, his 14th point for the day. 30,800, the crowd, not a capacity crowd, as Ward comes and gets a good run away, getting it to Schofield. He can't evade the tackle there of Kenny, who's put in a splendid defensive effort out in the centres. All his tackles have been absolutely copy book. The kick downfield is not going anywhere. It'll go to uh, Jack on the bounce. He comes upfield, evades, no, he doesn't. Gets a pass to O'Connor. This will be the first Great Britain try. Did he drop it? Michael O'Connor has dropped the ball. Gary Jack just being a bit too fancy near his goal line. And Schofield comes up with a try. 34 points to four. Ron Ferner will be livid. Edwards, Fox, Brooks. And uh, finally there. The good defence of Noel Cleal brings good way undone. Ten metres, so they've made no ground. And there's Foxhold, a little dummy. Got a pass away to Schofield. He can't unlock his arms. There's Meninga's there over the top. Potter at dummy half. Fox. Edwards. Pass on to Crooks. Trying to get that hand free to give the ball. He had a marker in front of him again there. And he's been allowed to play it sideways. And... Uh, that is astonishing to me that Mr. Rascandy would allow that to go, but from the kick ahead, Jack's in possession. Straight a little bit like Brown's cows going back to that uh, ruck. Just short of the uh, quarter line. Now penalty against uh, Great Britain. That penalty count now reads this way. Great Britain 11, Australia 9. And the scrums, just to bring you up to date on the statistics, Australia have won eight to Great Britain's four. On to Dunn, who's had as good a debut as you can hope to see, allowing for a, uh, a pretty ordinary opposition, apart from the opening 20 minutes. Schofield coming up to take an intercept on that occasion. Out there to Kenny. Kenny to O'Connor. O'Connor up the sideline, going to score a try. Oh, it'll be Lamb. Oh, he's been pulled back. The pass from O'Connor. Terry Lamb thought he'd score a score. for this uh, Great Britain side. Australia have come up with a scoreline that is 34 points to four. So a real, what you call a duke. There's a little bit of swapping of jumpers and so forth. I'd suggest some of these Great Britain players get their hands on a, an Australian jersey as soon as they can. I don't expect to see many of them in the third test.
Victory is to Australia, but even in defeat, the Brits are in good cheer, and it's a night where old foes become chums. The Kangaroos' midweek game after the second test is against Widnes, which lies in the region near Liverpool in the Mersey Basin. Elias, Alexander, switches it back on the inside. It's gone to Alexander again. He's thrown the dummy. He's going to kick ahead and he's going to score the try. The referee has awarded it. Sharp work from Alexander. I can't believe some of the refereeing we've seen on this tour. The referees appear to be watching one team only. And this witness side don't need any help from a referee. They've performed adequately and eminently satisfactorily tonight. Anyway, getting back to the business of hand, Mick Burke, the fullback, comes up. He's directly in front, 15 metres out, and it is a goal. So the scoreline now into the second half is Australia 8, witness 4. Gee whiz. Little quick hands should be a try in the corner, is it? It is to Chris Mortimer. The referee judges on that one. That was just straight out quick passing, and they ran out of defenders. Witness out wide. One, two, three, strikes it, and my heavens, he's got the distance, all right, no question about that. It's a beautiful goal, and went straight into the crowd. That's a splendid kick there from that range. 14 to 4, Australia have gone away to what they would think was a slightly more comfortable lead. Got five tackles to go, 20 metres out. Dale Shearer looking for a uh, ball, gets a pass away to Benny Elias. Elias shows the dummy. Attempted to uh, fool the defence with a dummy kick, but they didn't fall for it. In the last five minutes, I'm reliably informed. Bella pumping it up again, goes through one defender. Two, still going. Good surging run. He gets very close to scoring a try. He has scored. That is a powerhouse bit of work by Martin Bella, who's really pounded his way through the rucks tonight, let me tell you. Ten metres outside their quarter. Last tackle coming up. Now, what's Pinner going to do? He's going to kick for touch. It's rebounded off an Australian player. Straight back to a witness man to Wright, who loses it in the tackle. That's the end of the section. Australia have come up. No, it's not the end of the section. Now the kids are on the field. That play will have to stop. Belcher's running. He should just run over the sideline, I think. And there's 150, 250 kids on the field here at the moment. It would be eminently dangerous were it to continue. So, 20 points to four. The win to the Australian side. On a long overseas tour, the fitness and stamina of a team is paramount. Just as important is the harmony and companionship that will be formed in this lifetime experience. What a funny The Australians return to Humberside, along the familiar route toward the North Sea, where they take on the club team, Hull. The venue is the Boulevard. And a scrum win against the feed to the Australia side, Sterling's away, up the sideline, going strongly, looks like he can score, I don't know, yes he is! Peter Sterling with a beautiful blindside break. Jack's got it out to Miles, Miles looking for Sterling, gets it to him now, back on the inside to O'Connor, O'Connor goes well, finally put out. Still gets to his feet, going nicely, still going. It's a brilliant run by O'Connor, got a pass away to Lamb, and it's a try. Miles has stepped everybody, gone right up the middle, must be another try, is it? Going to be to Meninga, look at him go, the big fella's bolted. He's right up the middle of the field, he's out distance everybody. Miles has come away with a bust. And he tried to run into him and uh, Daly just dispossessed him. Dowling, pass beautifully onto Langmack. Langmack looking on the inside, they'll put the glasses down. That's Des Hasler, the greyhound, and he's broken away. And he's going to score a beautiful try. That was the beautiful try, right underneath the black dot. Simmons, Langmack, good step, right through. Looks for support, Lamb's there, they won't catch Terry Lamb. You can put the glasses down right now. He's bolted right underneath the goalpost, so that's his 14th try for the season. That was Eastwood. Now they move it out along the line again, the Hull side, punching it out wide. 
but the defence again too adequate. There's an intercept from Gene Miles, an intercept from the pass there by, from McCoy, and he just goes over and scores a try to sort of settle their hash on the halfway line. Simmons, a dive pass to Sterling. Langmack swivels his way through a tackle, gets it to Sterling. Second replay coming up now. Long cutout pass to Miles. Miles on the accelerate, tears away, gets it to Jack. Jack's going strong, looks for support, throws the dummy. Had support there with Dale Shearer on the inside. I think he should have passed. He gets up and plays it forward and he's in. Sterling. Sterling to Lamb. Lamb pops it. Can't get a pass now. Gets away now. Out to Simmons. Simmons on to Meninga. Meninga away to Shearer. And Shearer's in for a try. There's the hooter in the background. So the lads, the Australian team have come up with a rousing victory to the tune of 48 points to nil. Noel Cleo's just been taken straight off by the doctor. It looks as though he's uh, broken his uh, right forearm. Noel, what went through your mind at Hull when you went down into it? Did you really believe that the arm was gone there and then? Mate, with a, a burning sensation here, yeah, I, I didn't want to believe it, but I, I knew it was gone. Uh, naturally, it's a huge disappointment to have to leave the team and go home. Yeah, I, um, that's the worst part about it because, you know, it looks pretty prominent now that they'll go through undefeated. This vast Odsall Stadium has housed the world record league crowd of 102,000 plus back in 1954. It's also renowned for its foggy weather. The main critical factor is uh, all of these players will be aware is retention of the ball here. They've got to ignore the conditions and try to hold the football for the period of time. Wally Lewis on the surge, looking back on the inside, and it's a nice try coming into Linda. Good work there. It was good defence there coming at him too in the shape of Terry Holmes, former Welsh rugby international. Up to Hasley on the overlap, it's out to Alexander. Oh, why did he go for the kick there? He's going to score anyway! He's going to score anyway, and I was just about to criticise him and say, why did he go for the kick? I thought he had the beating of the defence. Now, Elias again, pumping it out to the left. There's Wally Lewis going for a high kick. I've got no idea where the ball's gone. I haven't got a clue. It's somewhere in the end of the end goal area. I think somebody scored a try. Australia have scored it. Well, it had to be Australia. My, my director, who's a, a last guess, a second guesser, <laughs> said they'd scored a try. Had to be Australia, and I think it's Chris Mortimer, too. Well, the crowd calling out behind me here. Bring it back this way, because it's gone over on the open side, and nobody can see who's running with the football. But there's been some magic passing going on out there. And Australia have, have taken play. Wally Lewis come up with a try. Well, there you are. Wally Lewis has scored a try, and it's the first time I've seen Wally in the game I've been commentating on that I haven't been able to call him uh, actually going over the line. Elias might have a little sprint from dummy half here if he thinks things are on. Oh, there's an easy one. On a Malmeninga. <laughs> oh, gee whiz. Benny Elias just ran a little bit sideways, a little bit like a soldier crab. Picked his mark. There was Malmeninga right in the middle. Mortimer. Hasler. Belcher. Lewis. Oh, lovely running from Kenny. Kenny back on the inside. This is Terry Lamb's 15th try. Little Terry Lamb there on the backup. Belcher will link with Alexander. Long hurl to pass out there to Alexander. Showed the dummy and got it on the inside. And he's still going. He's beaten one, beaten two. It's a, another beautiful try from Alexander. No, he's been put into touch. Oh, really? <laughs> it's, it's bad. Yeah, anyway, there's the end of the section. And I'm not sorry because they've come up with a scoreline that uh, read 38 points to nil. Come on, Ellis. We need the bit of work, the ones that haven't played. We've got to make sure that we're going to... One the so there's two sections tomorrow, one on Friday. So we're all picking the lunchtime. Come on, just let's get into it. The days in England are numbered, and the team can sense another all-conquering tour. Only one match remains against Great Britain, and that's the third and final test. Soon to leave behind the landscape and the people that have taken them to their hearts. The kangaroos will be long remembered and talked about in the same vein as the Invincibles of 82. A group of young men that came and conquered.
series has already been wrapped up. Everybody's expecting us to make it a whitewash this afternoon. Are you expecting a much tougher Great Britain side? Yeah, I just think the five persons they put in, the players, they put in will try and prove the fact that uh, they should have been in the first place. So their attitude's going to be spot on. Uh, ours has been very good through the week. The build-up has been great. I just expect, it's like all test matches, it'll be uh, decided in the first half hour. What about the uh, selection of Mal Meninga? What were your thoughts behind putting Big Mal into the second round? Well, I just got a similar type of player as Crusher. I've got a lot of defensive players there, and I just needed someone who can run and uh, use the ball, and he certainly fits that category. Is there anybody on the tour that has surprised you? I know you've spoken to us about the ability of this team right throughout. Anybody that really has been outstanding? No, I just think the halves have done a great job and uh, the backs. And uh, when you look at the whole lot, you can't pick anyone out because it's been a team effort. And we've played in great style. Every time we've won, uh, it's been a, a, a good exhibition of uh, a rugby league. So when you get to that level and you play well every week, uh, you just don't like to pick one or two out. But... As I said, I've got a very, very good, talented squad and I hope we can finish it off today. OK, the England side coming on and the crowd give them a big lift with a mighty roar. There's the man that's under pressure, Maurice Bamford, with the uh, white collar coming out there. And uh, he's a man, I think, that uh, the rugby league supporters of England totally disagree with the way he selected his sides for this series, but he's had the courage of his convictions. Although he's not earned the, uh, the praise from many of the great internationals that I've spoken to, they consider that uh, the sides for the first two tests were uh, just not the right teams to be selected. The slow walk is on here. John Fleming leading the uh, Australian team out. Uh, Wally Lewis is there, very edgy. Media on the field taking pictures. Wide interest, this game being televised, of course, by the BBC in England. The conditions are absolutely beautiful. The grass is perfect. The ground is in firm apple pie condition. There's the Great Britain team on your screen at the moment. Lydon, Gill, Bassnett on the wing, Schofield, Stevenson, Myla, Gregory, the Hay Hards, Ward, Watkinson, Crooks, the props, Burton, Goodway, the second row, Pinner, the lock, the subs, Edwards and Potter, and Maurice Bamford, the coach. The referee, of course, is Mr. R Gillian Rastcagnier of uh, France. The Australian side, Gary Jack, Michael O'Connor and Dale Shearer, the wing and fullbacks, Kenny and Miles still in the centre, Lewis and Sterling still the halves, Dowling, Simmons and Dunn the front row, Meninga, Big Mal is in the uh, second row, he's in there of course with uh, Brian Liebling and Bob Linder is the lock forward. Mr Rastcagney looks at his watch. And Schofield starts the ball rolling with a low trajectory kick. Nicely half volleyed by uh, Sterling. Gets it to Meninga and he's picked off with a great tackle by Crooks. Got a bit of a knock there. He's up and about. Now comes Dowling. Dowling goes under a swinging arm tackle. He's about five metres out there driving him backwards. Simmons is there to try to prop him up. Plays it. Looking for Sterling. Sterling gets a kick downfield. It's a midfield kick. It's going to go to Lydon. Lydon's got it. He's bringing it up. O'Connor is there. And he's picked off with a magnificent tackle by Kenny. Right round the boots. Ten metres outside their quarter. Henderson Gill running from dummy half. Try to weave his way through the pack. Midway between the England quarter and halfway. Up they come now. Number 12 there. A strong burst from Andy Goodway. Trying to get beyond that advantage line. Little Andy Gregory at dummy half. He's the halfback. And number 11 there is Chris Burton. The high knee action coming in there. And he's lost the football in the tackle. So Burton not having an auspicious first touch. Now uh, scrum to go down eight metres into the England half. Watkinson, the last man in the hooker. And the England Packers gone in underneath the Australians. And now uh, Simmons has still got his head stuck out. It's a penalty to Australia. He's asked the English Pack to back off and let the Australians in. They declined to do so. And he's... Uh, Penalise them. Wally Lewis. Oh, that's a good line kick to start with. That's taken play right up to the uh, Great Britain quarter line. That's one area that, uh, the only area I'm critical of in this Australian team. Sterling, out to Lewis. Lewis on to Dowling. Under a high tackle there from Burton. Got a pass away to Miles. And Miles is in for a try. Miles is in for the try. A pop pass there. Absolute magnificent stuff right from the early moment. I didn't think there was a pass on. And Gene Miles has cracked them wide open. Michael O'Connor, the big deep breath. And there he goes. That's a 
A goal to Australia to Michael O'Connor. So the score after only about four minutes here. Australia six, Great Britain nil. There's a penalty now. The referee had the whistle to his mouth. Out to Miles. Miles lobs a long floating pass out to Shearer. Shearer actually sidestepped into that tackle. That was a good one from John Bastard. Kenny. Lewis. Niebling. Out to Dowling. Dowling going hard over the halfway line. Was caught in a deep position there. Way to Sterling. Out to Wally Lewis. The low trajectory rubber type kick coming into play. Oh, is it going to be a beauty? Yes, it is. It's a gain of around about 45 metres end over end and uh, found itself over the sideline about seven metres out from the line. Beautiful kick. About 22 minutes of play. Dowling from a tap restart. And then they built him back. Some robust defence coming in from this Great Britain pack. Simmons, Lewis, Sterling, Miles. Back into Jack. Jack's on the tear. He's 15 metres out. Busted a tackle. He's taken it to within eight metres of the Great Britain line. Bit of ordinary defence there on the inside. Can't get to his feet. Now he does. Onto Miles. Sterling. Sterling pops a pass there to Dunn. And Dunn's trying desperately to score in the corner. He's tackled a metre short. Wally Lewis, oh beautiful pass from Lewis to Kenny, Kenny away to Sterling, is touched, out there it goes to Dowling, Dowling away to uh, number 13, and it's Bob Linder in for a try. Beautiful work there from Wally Lewis at the start of that build-up, with a pass that barely touched his hands. Absolute genius. Great Britain now trailing by 10 points to nil. Two tries to the Australian side. Michael O'Connor, 15 metres out and about 20 metres off centre. Breeze at his back. Strikes that. It's an ordinary looking kick all over the place, but it's two points. So Australia lead now uh, by 12 points to Great Britain's nil. On to Gregory. Gregory on to Pinner. Pinner tries to search for a way by leaping through the tackle there. But it was pretty solid from Dowling, as it's been all the year. All the tour. Gregory stops, props, gets it away to Schofield. Legs chopped from underneath him by Sterling. Gregory standing too shallow, this uh, Great Britain side. Crooks goes for a high kick. It's taken beautifully on the full there by the uh, wings three quarter, I believe it is. Awkward position here. Yes, it is. And uh, away they go across the field now after Crooks. Crooks now for a kick again. Kicking into the breeze, they're trying to go over the defence. It's been taken by Kenny. Rather well too, leapt high for that. Tackled by Henderson Gill. Gene Miles running from dummy half, putting him under pressure. He's caught by the legs from Henderson Gill. 12 points to nil, Australia lead Great Britain. We've had about 26 minutes of play in the first half of the third test. Oh, beautifully taken again by... Uh, Bastard, he's uh, pulled off some marvellous catches, caught that bomb just a moment ago and took another one very well. Away to Myler. Myler runs from dummy half and he's belted to the ground by Meninga. Watkinson swivels around and gives it to Crooks on the blind side. Lacking support though whenever he runs. There's not a lot of uh, trailers going with him. Gregory straightens it up. He can't get a pass away. He tries to. There was nobody on the move on the outside. And I think that's what's incensing the crowd. They're booing a lot, even though Great Britain are in possession. Pinner, away to Ward. Ward trying to straighten it up. He tears his way through a couple of defenders. Takes play on the last tackle to within five metres of the Australian quarter line. Linden gets a kick in. It's not a bad one. I think it came off an Australian player. It did, and that will be a Great Britain feed. So this is a golden opportunity for the... Uh, the men in white to uh, come up with possession inside the Australian quarter. The scrum screwing are right around here. The referee wants it to come back square. It's only 10 metres out from the Aussie line. It's in and out. They bring Henderson Gill in from the blind side. He's very close to getting through the tackle there. It was uh, Linda who pulled him down finally. Myler out to Pinner. Pinner onto Schofield. Schofield gets it away to the winger on the sideline there. Again, it was the John Bastard pulling off a very, very nice catch of the ball. And just outside the quarter, Crooks comes on the blind side. 12 points to nil, Australia lead. About 30 minutes of play have gone by. 
as Goodway comes with a run that evades one defender. He'd do a lot better if he ran straight, though. He tends to veer. Gregory. Pinner. Cut out fast to Burton. And a miler. Miler's into the clear. He's got Schofield on the inside. He goes up the mid. Feel the Schofield. He'll probably score. He will. It's a beautiful try to Great Britain. Beautiful try to Great Britain. Miler busted them up the middle. And Gary Schofield, the man who loves to do the Terry Lamb thing and back up and score the try, came up with a fired exhibition of backing up there. And full credit to Miler on that occasion for getting through and uh, electing to go hard instead of kicking as he did in the other test and earning everybody's ire. That was a splendid bit of work. It traversed about 55, 60 metres and there's full credit to the Great Britain side. So 12 points to four. Henderson Gill taking the kick. Schofield, the man on screen at the moment, was the scorer, but there's the man who made it. Tony Marler. He's only about 18 metres out and about 15 metres off centre. Low trajectory, it's a goal! And the loud roar proclaims that Great Britain are back in business. So the scoreline now reads Australia 12, Great Britain 6. Dowling just beyond the advantage line. Midway between the Australian quarter, uh, the Great Britain quarter and halfway. Simmons on a Dunn. Dunn through one to tackle. Pops a pass. Has to be half volleyed and has done so nicely by Simmons. Pass went to ground first. On the Great Britain quarter, Meninga. Sterling, Lewis, pops a pass to Miles, Miles has dropped it, it's picked up by Stevenson, Stevenson goes upfield, he had support outside in good way but couldn't offload, now good way, pops a pass there to Ward, Ward stands in a tackle, he's got it away there again nicely, now to good way, who's been involved with several times, they're keeping the ball alive, Stevenson, and the crowd rise to the Great Britain side, as they uh, are making hay of some of these Australian errors. Gregory, Pinner, Burton. Wally Lewis trying to steal the ball from him. Five metres the England side of uh, halfway. Henderson Gill looking to run from dummy half. He's gone well. Sterling's tried to get to him, couldn't, but Jack does and puts him down. Now Great Britain in a good attacking position. Myler goes the blind side, gets it away to his winger. Bastet, Bastet goes over the... Uh, the Australian quarter line, 12 points to six. Australia lead. Gregory out to Pinner. Pinner turns it back inside to Ward. Stood in a tackle, pops the pass to Gregory. They're keeping it alive. Gregory weaves through. Got a pass to Schofield. And Schofield's tackled only about eight metres out from the Australian line. Watkinson swings it right away to Pinner. Pinner there out to Marla. Marla throws a pass over the sideline. And the Australian hearts beat once again. <laughs> they'll be saying thank God he did because it looked like a try in the corner if that pass had gone to hand last tackle coming up great defence by Great Bitten putting Australia under a lot of pressure away to Wally Lewis he's got the kick down fielders to the open side it's dangerous if it goes to Henderson Gill it does Henderson Gill a little bit of a shepherd there but the referee says no he's beaten one two three still going Wally Lewis finally gets to him and puts him down eight metres into Australia's half Gregory, Gregory running from dummy half, he's wrapped up, can't get a pass away, Dowling was the tackler. 12 points to 6, Australia lead. Watkinson, away to Pinner, loses the ball, knocked on by Australia, picked up by Henderson Gill. So that's a fair decision by the referee, it came off an Australian player, it wasn't lost forward by Great Britain. Burton coming straight through the ruck, getting beyond the advantage line, listen to that crowd! They're really giving Great Britain some now. Ward. <laughs> Torn his way right through. But lacks support. He's up with a quarter. Now Australia under pressure. Watkinson. Gregory. Pinner. Myler. Good way. Crocs. Crocs out to Stevenson. Inside. The Schofield. It's a magic try for the Great Britain side. They've laid it all out there with great hands along the three-quarter line. And this is going to have a lot of faces very Let's see now. We've got uh, Lydon taking this kick. Obviously, he takes the wider ones out on the quarter. Ten metres in from the sideline. Strikes it. It's there! So, for the first time in the series, with the breeze at their back, we've got a scoreline that's locked at 12 all.
We saw an amazing sight just then. The small man, little Gregory, took on Mal Meninga, just ran straight at him with the ball. And they came together with a hell of a thump. But I've got to say, Gregory didn't come out of it half bad. Look at the chases here. Shearer feels that beautifully. They're all offside. Now they're onside. He gets the pass to Jack. Jack's got support on the outside, gets it to O'Connor, trying to get it up over the quarter line. That side step of his gets him uh, to within two metres of it. Now it's Linda, the lock forward running. Crossfield, he's beaten one. Looks for support if he'd had uh, Kenny there. He had Kenny on the right and couldn't quite get the pass away. Simmons running from dummy half, makes a good inroad. And Graham Hughes, a whole new ball game, a whole new atmosphere. Can Great Britain just keep going for the full 80 minutes? That's the question. Wally Lewis, you can tell Australia's in trouble. Kenny gets the pass away to Shearer and he's dragged over the sideline. Now Lyndon gets that kick downfield. It's going to go on the end over end over end into the end goal where Michael O'Connor feels it. Schofield's there. He evades Schofield beautifully. Gets it to Jack. Jack goes upfield and Henderson Gill puts him down with a beautiful tackle. Australian forwards taking a long while to come back on side at the moment. Now Mal Meninga called on a run as a forward. And he does that effectively. Great Britain player being treated at the moment, uh, Graham Hughes. That's, that's Andy Good. That's Andy Goodway in back play. He's moved back into the defensive line now. Ten metres from the uh, halfway line. Plenty of fire in this match right now. Miles running, gets it on to Dunn. Dunn goes over the top of one tackle. Crooks takes him round one leg. Simmons on the blind side to Lewis. Lewis throws the dummy. Still going. Wally Lewis on the surge. Gets it away to Balmeninga. Long pass back in the yard. Oh, dear, oh, dear. And went on the bounce. And went on the bounce to Linda, the lock forward, who tried to kick it. And he kicked it over the dead ball line. Golden opportunity there for Australia. The pass from Balmeninga was ill-directed. And uh, Linda really couldn't judge how hard to kick it. There it is. Watch Meninga. This pass went nowhere. It was much too, uh, much too short, and Linda really had hit him on a stride. He had nowhere to go. Now Sterling to feed the ball. Dale Watkinson hasn't got his head in yet. It's in and out. Sterling runs on the open side, but his hair pulled slightly in that tackle. Linda runs from dummy half. He's broken two tackles. That's a good, powerful run from the young fella. Gets to his feet quickly and plays it. Simmons away to Wally Lewis. Lewis out to Kenny. Kenny straightens his man up, can't get a pass away. There was a fine bit of tackling from Stevenson around his legs. Lewis on to Dunn. Dunn belted to the ground by Crooks. They're at five metres short of the halfway line. On to Wally Lewis. A long pass out to Shearer up the wing. He gets round his man, goes ahead, kicks over the top. It's a race for the ball. Will Shearer get to it? He's been brought down illegally. And it's going to be a penalty try. Certainly the lead-up work from Dale Shearer was of an excellent uh, nature. He beat a man up the sideline, kicked judiciously, and in the race for the ball, Bassnett uh, did exactly what I think 99% of footballers would have done. Gamesmanship. Michael O'Connor's kick is successful, so the scoreline now it is in Australia's favour by 18 points to 12. Played it very badly at six to go, and they do persist in walking around the marker who's standing in front of them. Henderson Gill running from dummy half. Tackled on the Australian quarter. Graham, you'll give me a notification when Burton comes on. Burton has moved to the uh, to the tunnel. He's just waiting for the OK to go to the... Hilo right through the middle. Gets interfered with Raskagny. He's gone around one man. He's tackled. Mr Raskagny was down on the ground. Marla uh, sort of ran into him a little bit. It's away to Pinner. Pinner, the long, long pass. Been taken well out there by the winger. And it's Bastet who came forward on a diagonal run. Nearly penetrating Australia's defence. There's a penalty been awarded. Failure to get off the tackle player. Don't do that. Paul Dunn, don't kick the ball away and compound the error. They must take the kick at goal. And there's the kick. It's successful. So that scoreline now moves to Australia 18, Great Britain 14.
Lee Crooks in possession for Great Britain, 10 metres out from the Australian quarter. Watkinson, Gregory, Myler, Pinner, Schofield. Schofield's got support in Stevenson, and it takes a top tackle there from Linda to get him adrift. And that was a, another continuation of the good form by Linda. Ward running crossfield, heavily built to the ground by Paul Dunn. Australia on the rack at the moment. That's the first time I've said that in this test series. Gregory, dummies, back on the inside to Henderson Gill. He basketballs it straight to Ward. Ward goes hard and straight, but Jack comes over the top. And Dowling's underneath. They're only about eight metres out now. Ten, perhaps. On to Gregory. Gregory to Crooks. Crooks pops a pass to Myler. And up they come in twos to belt him to the ground. It's Potter at dummy half. Last tackle. One of the tactics. Going to be a drop and goal by Schofield. It is. So they reduce that deficit very slightly. 18 to Australia and 15 to the Great Britain side. Nebling, a nice pass to Sterling. Sterling looks for support and ran into terrible uh, trouble there as he stepped into Myler and Gregory. Check. Lewis, Dunn, Meninga. Pass away. Picked it up. No knock on. Got it out to Shearer. Shearer's taken to the ground about uh, 15 metres from the Great Britain quarter line. Some messy play coming up now. Gene Miles gets a pass away to Shearer. Shearer gets into the Great Britain quarter. 18 points to 15. There's Roy Simmons running around behind the defence. Got it to Wally Lewis. Wally throws a dummy. Another dummy. And Lewis has gone under the post. An incredible solo try from Wally Lewis. May well have gained Australia just that little bit of a breathing space here that'll hold them away from this Great Britain side. They punched it up the blind side a couple of times. Dale Shearer was in there for a while, made a bit of an inroad, then Wally Lewis went up there throwing dummies, left, right and centre. The Great Britain side, for one of the rare occasions, hung off. Michael O'Connor with a kick to come. Michael O'Connor, 10 metres out, a few metres off centre. Successful, the scoreline now moves on. Australia 24, Great Britain 15. Graham Hughes, you've got news. Well, just as Great Britain try and make their way upfield again, Terry Lamb is going to play in all these games on the England tour. He's on the sideline to replace Mal Meninga. OK. Well, he'll probably come in as a uh, lock forward and Linda will go into the... Uh, the second row, one would think. Now, Great Britain still not giving up on this job. Ward tries to straighten and is knocked backwards, but it regathers. He's forces and goes upfield, makes a good inroad. Took a good tackle there from Davidson to put him away the second time. Schofield on to Gregory. Gregory out to Pinner. Pinner to Henderson Gill. He's up the sideline. Gary Jack comes at him and brings him down. And he's over the sideline. Only five metres out from the Australian line. Sensations continue to come in this match. Terry Lamb will just about get on the field here. And here's a replay of that. You'll see the, uh, the cover work done by Gary Jack. Just managed to get him over the sideline. Well, the crowd has been told us there's something in the order of 20,000, which would put it under the 100,000 they need for the series, but it looks more than 20,000 to me. But I'm no judge of a crowd at Central Park, I hasten to add. 24 to 15, scrum about eight metres out now from the Australian line. It's in and out the Australian side. Sterling swung to the ground by Gregory. Lamb's going to get his first touch of the football here. Here's Terry Lamb, he gets it away to Wally Lewis. Wally Lewis goes strong and hard and uh, takes it beyond the advantage line. And the, oh, Terry Lamb, your first, uh, your second touch of the football was a knock on. And that's uh, a misfortune. The time going to run out on this match, but what a, a turn up it's been. Great Britain has certainly got something to build on. I feel rather pleased for uh, Maurice Bamford in a way because he's, he's received so much flack from all and sundry over here. It's in and out, beautiful clean heel. Way to Myler, the run around, the double around actually to Pinner. The pass has gone finally to Gregory who's back slam. And just as well he was, there was uh, plenty of room out there on the right. Miles was the, the man who did the slam. Henderson Gill trying to use himself as a battering ram. About 15 metres out from Australia's line. Schofield looks up the sideline as Lee Crooks 
as he takes it up the blind side. Now can Great Britain get a try on the dying stages? It's not any good way. He's within about five metres before he's put down. And there's the herder in the background. And that's the end of the section. A magnificently fought out uh, third, but not deciding uh, test match. Won by Australia, 24 to 15. Wally Lewis is just about to make a speech here in the dressing shed. He's got the, uh, the ashes uh, and the trophy with him right now, so he might pass it over to uh, Wally Lewis. You want to say something to the boys, Will? Oh, I'd just like to congratulate them on the way they handled themselves through the, uh, through the test series, but especially today that England really put it to us and they played some outstanding football and they had a lot of variation there, which uh, got us in a lot of trouble, but they proved once again that uh, even under the, the utmost pressure, they managed to handle themselves well and... Uh, perform creditably as the best rugby league in the world should. Before the young Australians reached the shores of Mother England, they played a test match in Papua New Guinea, convincingly notching up a 62 to 12 win. And now that the fate of the Great Britain team has been sealed on English soil, the kangaroos cross the channel to take on France. This being France, the formality started with each player being presented with a vintage bottle from one of the local chateaus. Not that the French were ever likely to have much cause for celebration. The first of Mike O'Connor's six goals opened the scoring. What followed was to make rugby league history. Second half started the way the first finished, with a scoring spree. After six straight victories in the south of France, and all big wins, the Kangaroos were fast approaching the 1982 record. Only this test match remains, and there seems no doubt as to the outcome. France's misery. It was the biggest winning margin in international league history. After enduring the cold of a European winter, the players arrived home to glorious sunshine and a long-awaited reunion with family and friends. The 86 kangaroos delighted the large crowds that flocked to see them, amassing 738 points while conceding only 126 points. Gets it to Sterling. Sterling swivels and gets it to Jack. Jack will go in for a try. It's a rocker. It's a beauty. It's a gasser. All 28 players excelled, with Terry Lamb becoming the first player to appear in all games on a kangaroo tour. Another standout performer was Michael O'Connor, who scored 22 points in the first test against Great Britain. His overall tally of 170 points surpassed the previous record held by Mal Meninga. Michael O'Connor, magnificent, magnificent stuff from the jewelry. Playing on the wing and playing on the wing outside of such uh, exceptional players as Brett Kenny and Gene Miles and Wally Lewis, I don't think you could probably play outside of three better players. There's Roy Simmons running. For Captain Wally Lewis, the tour was a great achievement, especially after the disappointments for him in 1982. His try in the third test was an unforgettable solo effort that sealed the match. Just that little bit of a breathing space here. I suppose it's hard to, to nominate them as a greater side when you look at blokes like. Uh, uh, Raper and, and Gaznier and, and Beach and that sort of era, but uh, I'm sure that uh, once these guys are as old as, as what those guys are now, I'm sure their names will be uh, written in the history books.
Let the glimmering ghosts of other times, or the noble triumphs, hearken unto the veterans of the terraces, who, recalling the names of Beetson, Gasner, Churchill, and Messenger, now speak the names of Ferner's Legion, of warriors brave, and an army invincible, and call them blessed. Glorious names that were familiar once round dead northern towns, as they went out and broke the lion's strength. We suffered in their coming and their going, but in our hearts, in the long northern winter, we grudge them not. Though we weary, weary of the long sorrow, and yet we have our joy. The green and golds fought, and they were victorious.